Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Chronically Me podcast. I'm your host, Amy Esther, and in today's episode, we are talking about mom guilt. If you live chronically ill like me and are looking for more purpose, control, and joy in your life, then you are in the right place. This is a podcast that challenges your thinking around chronic illness so you can live the most amazing life despite extra challenges. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are talking about motherhood with chronic illness. I get this question a lot. I've talked about this many times with clients I have that are mothers, and I have also felt a lot of mom guilt in my life. Now, if you are not a mother, this episode will still be helpful for you with any guilt that you feel. So maybe you feel like you are not doing enough as a spouse or as a partner, or maybe you feel like you're not doing enough as a college student, or you're just not doing things the way that you thought they should be with wherever you are in your life. But most of the examples we're going to talk about today will be related to being a mom. Just change them to what works for you. So I am a mother of two, almost three. By the time you're hearing this podcast episode, I'm going to be so close to having this baby. I'm very excited about that. I'm actually secretly very ahead on my podcast episodes. So I am filming this at the end of June, and I think it's going up in August. So I'm very proud of myself for that, I have to say. But at the time of hearing this episode, I am going to be a few weeks away from being a mom to three young kids. I will have three kids, three and under when I have this baby. So I have young kids and I feel a lot of guilt for being chronically ill, for being sick all of the time when I have these young kids. Some of you might have older kids, so just adapt to your situation. But for me, in my situation with my young kids, I feel a lot of guilt around what I do and don't do with them. I am with them all day, every day. My oldest is not even in preschool yet. I feel a lot of guilt when I see my friends who take their kids to the splash pad every week during the summer and they take their kids on super fun vacations and they're always out doing something or even just simply going on walks with their kids. I feel like I can't even do that. I feel a lot of guilt pile up that I am not enough, that I should be doing more for my kids, that if they had a different mom, they would be more active or they would get to do more things or they'd see more places. And with me, they're at home almost all the time. We don't go out very often. We don't vacation hardly ever. My kids have been on like one vacation and it was just to a family cabin. And we just don't do a lot outside the house. And because of that, I feel a lot of guilt because what I see on social media and from my friends talking about it is that they take their kids out very often. I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, HealthTap. HealthTap is a telemedicine company where you can talk to doctors 24-7 with their urgent care or by appointment with the doctor of your choice. I think HealthTap is the perfect solution to someone who lives chronically ill because it's virtual. You can do it from your home. You can talk to your doctors from your home where you are safe and you don't have to use your energy and your precious time to get up and go to multiple doctor's appointments. As we all know, we have. You can connect with the doctor in minutes or schedule an appointment with the doctor of your choice. You can get personalized care by video chat or text your doctor anytime to get refills, clarify health goals, and ask questions. With a doctor I worked with on HealthTap, we talked about some of my gut health and she said that I could text her some of the foods that I was more sensitive to so she could go over that before our next appointment. And it's so easy to send a little text message to your doctor with follow-up questions. You can get a diagnosis, prescription, lab tests, referrals, and a treatment plan, all from the comfort of your own home. Get the care that's right for you, whether it's women's health, children's health, sexual health, men's health, chronic care, or wellness prevention and lifestyle. HealthTap accepts hundreds of insurance plans to use for both urgent care and primary care visits. Enjoy savings and benefits with subscription. HealthTap offers an inexpensive, convenient, and simple way to manage chronic illness and live your best life. If you subscribe and use the code 
AEPC, you get your first visit for free. Use my link in the description of the YouTube video version of this podcast or in the show notes on your favorite podcast app. Now let's get back to the episode. If you live chronically ill, which you probably do if you're listening to this podcast, but it can feel like because of your chronic illness, you are not able to measure up to these other moms, that you're not able to do as much as these other moms because of the illness. But something really interesting that I've realized recently is that every mom feels mom guilt in some way or another. I was recently talking to a friend about when we were in college and this friend was a couple years younger than me. And in my mind, she was cooler than me, prettier than me, All the boys liked her better than me. She was funnier than me. I always felt less than around her. She was my best friend. And yet I felt like she was just so much better than me that she was always getting what I wanted and always had what I didn't. And I always just felt insecure. Like I wasn't enough and that she was so much better than me. And especially because she was a couple years younger than me, I remember feeling like, that's even worse because she's younger. And I just always thought I was the older one who was less cool and annoying. And that's what I always thought of myself. And I was talking to her the other day and she was telling me how she always felt so insecure, like, oh, she was younger than me. And so I was the cool one. And I was the one that everybody liked and that she just tagged along with me because she was like the little kid that just showed up with her friend and wasn't as cool as me. And I was like, what in the world? Like you were way cooler than me. People liked you way more than me. You were funnier than me. You were prettier than me. You still are, right? That's what my brain does. It's like, here's all these things that you are that I'm not. And she's looking at me saying, these are all the things that you are that I'm not. And what was funny is the thing that made her the most insecure was that she was younger than me. And the thing that made me envy her the most was that she was younger than me. And that was so much better and cooler. (laughs) And isn't that so funny? Like what made her insecure made me jealous. And the truth is we all feel like we aren't enough. We all feel like everybody else is doing it right and we're doing it wrong. Even if you were not chronically ill, you would still feel mom guilt. You would still feel like you weren't measuring up to everyone else. And it's because all we see is the outside of other people. Like with my friend when we were in college, even though we were best friends and we talked about a lot of things, it was still hard for me not to compare myself to her and see this is all the things she has that I don't. And it was hard for her not to compare herself to me saying these are all the things that Amy has that I don't. And it's hard when it's you. You think like, how in the world could she want what I had at that time? Or how in the world could someone want what I have right now? And yet, I guarantee there is someone in your life, probably multiple people, who are looking at you saying, I wish I had what they had because they have X, Y, and Z and I don't. Because we always look at what we don't have. We look at what we're lacking, not what we are gaining. And it feels easier to blame that guilt on something. So it's easier to blame that guilt on, well, it's my chronic illness's fault that I'm not able to do these things. And that's why I feel this guilt. Well, guess what? If you weren't chronically ill and you did those things that you want to do, I guarantee the guilt would come in another way. Because guess what? All we see is the outside of other people. We don't see what's going on on the inside. We don't see how they're feeling emotionally. We don't see the trials that they're having. We don't get to go in their house with them and see what they're experiencing every day. We see social media. We see what people say on the outside. We see the highlights of their lives. We don't see the hard. When I go back and look at my social media, my personal family account where I share pictures of my kids and stuff, It is all the highlights of things that happen. It's the birthdays. It's the very rare traveling we do. It is having a baby. It is like a pregnancy announcement. It's the exciting things. But what I'm not sharing on there is the in-betweens, the hard things, which is 90% of my life. And that is everybody's story. It's just different. Everybody has a different story. Every mother has a different story. And when we realize that, 
the guilt lightens a little, <laughs> but there's still two more things that I want to share with you today about mom guilt and things to consider. Now, the first thing is what does it mean to be a good mother? This question is so simple, but it's so powerful. And I guarantee every single person listening to this podcast has a different idea of what a good mother is. So when I think about what a good mother is, I realize that the things I thought were important and that I was lacking don't even matter. Because to me, a good mother does not have to take their kids to Disneyland. Maybe they do, not required. A good mother does not have to take their kids to the park every week, not required. A good mother doesn't have to make Pinterest worthy meals every single day, not required. A good mother doesn't have to have a vacation planned every year and have activities planned every week. That does not make a good mother. What makes a good mother, my definition of a good mother, is someone who loves their children. That's it. Love creates everything that my children need. Love cares for their physical and their emotional needs. Love finds joy in the simple things. Love is there to snuggle after a bad dream. Love is there to be creative. The more I love my children, the more creative I am with the things that we do. I don't have to take them to Disneyland in order for them to be happy. We build forts with the pillows that we have in our house. In fact, my kids have very little toys, even though we're at our house all the time. People always comment on how little toys my kids have. But we have love. We have love, and even though we're home all the time, we don't have tons of toys, we are always having fun and joy. Love gives when there is no physical energy left. Love is all that matters to be a good mom. It's all that matters. And every good thing that comes from being a mom comes out of love. Whenever I feel love for my children, I show up in the best way for them. It's true. That's the only way that I can be a good mother is to love them. And it doesn't matter where I take them or where I don't take them. What matters is that I love them and I am there for them. When I love them, I'm physically there for them. I'm there to hug them when they are sad. I'm there to read them books and not sit on my phone. I am there to talk to them, to teach them, to read with them, to learn with them when I come from love. And that's all it takes to be a good mom. I promise you. Now, your definition of being a good mom might be different than mine. My definition of a good mom is someone who loves their child and cares for their physical and emotional needs. That's it. And when I show up with love, I am the perfect mom for my child. A belief that I tried on a little while ago that has completely changed my life was believing that I was the perfect mom for my children. I was exactly the mom that my kids needed exactly as I am with all my illnesses, with my struggles to go to the grocery store with them, with my struggles to go to the park with them, with my struggles to do anything active with them, my struggles with my physical and mental health, I am the perfect mother for them. And I tried on this idea and I started to realize that there is so much evidence that this is true. Now, you can try this on. I promise if you believe that you are the perfect mom for your child, or if you are not a mother, you're the perfect partner for your spouse, you are the perfect employee for your boss, if you try on that idea, you will notice that there is truth in that, that there is evidence that that is true. So let me share with you some of the evidence that is true that I am the perfect mom for my children even with my chronic illnesses, I'm exactly what they need. I find that both of my children are so empathetic. I had an experience where I was in so much pain and I was in the bathtub in a hot steaming bath, just in just awful pain. And my daughter sat next to me. She's three years old. She sat next to me and said, mom, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit here with you and you tell me if you need anything. She literally sat there with me, not saying a word for an entire hour because she had empathy for me. She saw that I was in so much pain and that is what she saw. 
she could do is just simply be there. What three-year-old has that emotional capacity to sit with someone who's in pain and not say anything and not do anything and not get distracted and just love them? That is huge. My son, who is not even two years old yet, the other day, I was not feeling so great and I was trying to make them food. I was trying to do things and I was just really struggling. And my son came and he grabbed my hand and he said, come mom. And I walked with him and he pointed to his bed and pointed to his pillow and he said, stay here. And he had me lay down on his bed and he played next to me because he knew I needed to lay down in that moment. He is not even two years old and yet he has the empathy. He knows when I'm not feeling good and he is able to be there for me. Not even two years old. Another thing is my kids are so creative. Like I mentioned, we don't have tons of toys. Like you go to other people's houses and I see the moms who have all these toys. And I've even told my husband, like, we need to buy the kids more toys. We don't have enough. And I feel a lot of guilt that I'm not buying my kids enough toys because guess what? I have a lot of medical bills. And even though I pay for their physical needs and their emotional needs, sometimes there's not a ton left in the budget to buy toys and little knickknacks and things. But what I've realized is, guess what? My kids are so creative. Like, my kids don't need a lot of toys. They have the biggest imaginations I have ever seen. They can find fun in anything. The pillows on our couch have been boats. They've been cars. They've been houses. They've been everything you can think of. They love to build stuff with the pillows. They also love to just pretend that things are there. They love to pretend to make food and they bring me food that's pretend and we pretend to eat it together. And they have the biggest imaginations. And I think it's because I never bought them tons of toys. I didn't take them out to tons of crazy, fun, exciting activities. They just learned to find fun on their own. My kids don't get bored. I don't think I've ever seen them bored. My kids have never said I'm bored because they have these huge imaginations. I'm the exact mom they needed. I am the exact person they needed to learn that. Next, my kids are super social. Now, I don't know how to explain this one because like I said, we don't go a lot of places. We go to church every week and my kids are very social. They love playing with other kids. And maybe it's because we don't go out very many places. So when we do, it's exciting and it's fun. When other kids might go out a lot more often and so they feel more of a desire to stay with mom. I don't know. Seems like it'd be opposite. But for my kids, they are both very social, love to be with other kids. Sometimes it's scary because my kids will literally just run away from me. (laughs) We go somewhere because they're so excited to be somewhere new. But they aren't afraid. They'll just run and do whatever. Going along with that, my kids are so independent. Like they will just do whatever they want. They don't even ask me for things. My son, who again is not even two years old, he's 20 months at the time of this recording, he likes to pull up a chair to the fridge and will open the fridge, climb up on his chair and get down whatever he needs. A few days ago, I heard him and thought, oh, he must be awake. And I checked the monitor. He wasn't in his room. He had gotten out of his room and went and got himself breakfast. Now, I did put a lock on his door since then because it's not quite safe for him at this age. But I was so proud of him for being so independent, like did not even come to mom and ask for food. He just went and got it himself. My kids are so independent, even at a young age. They learned that because mom's sick a lot and mom can't always get up and do stuff. Stuff. And so they've learned, hey, I'll just do it by myself. I can figure this out. And they use their brains to figure it out instead of always asking for me to do it. Another thing is my kids have learned so much. My three-year-old can read. She's three years old and she can read so well because we spend a lot of time reading. We spend a lot of time together just sitting on the couch reading books and she learned to read at a very very young age at two and a half she asked me to teach her how to read and they know the gospel so well that's a big part of my life is my religion and they know gospel stories so well because we have the time to sit and read and learn about the gospel together. So look at all this evidence that I am the perfect mom for my kids, that had I not been chronically ill, I would have been doing other things. I would have had more money for 
exciting toys, for exciting vacations, for going out places. Would they learn amazing stuff doing that? Yes. Would that be the perfect mom for them if that was the mom I was? Yes, but I'm not that mom. And so instead, I decide that the way I am right now is the perfect mom. The way you are is the perfect mom. If you do travel the world and you go traveling all the time, then what if you just believed that that was the perfect way to raise your children? Again, as long as you do it with love. But the way that I have raised my children with chronic illness, with not having the energy to go out and do fun, exciting things all the time, is actually really fun and exciting, even though we're not going out and doing stuff. So what if you were the perfect mom for your kids? What if you were the perfect employee for your job? What if you were the perfect partner for your spouse? What if you were the perfect college student for your university? What if that was true? If it was, then find the evidence. Just ask yourself, if it was true, what evidence can I find? If I was the perfect mom for my child, can I find evidence that that is true? That if I had more energy to go out and do stuff, that it wouldn't be the perfect situation like it is here. We can just decide that. It's just a thought. It's just a belief. We can believe whatever we want. And when I believe that I'm the perfect mom for my child, I find evidence that it's true. So let me know in the comments of the YouTube version of this podcast, what is it that your child has that they would not have if you didn't live chronically ill, if you weren't exactly as you are? What would your child be missing out on? Because you are the perfect mother for your child. You are the one that they need. You give them love. You care for their physical and emotional needs, and that's it. The rest comes from love. The rest comes from just being there for your kid and being exactly as you are. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Hey, friend, do you find value in this podcast but want to take it to the next level? Work with me one-on-one or check out Chronically Me, the course and workbook. This course takes the things you are learning on the podcast and helps you apply them directly to your life. This course dives deeper into changing your thinking, teaching you how the brain works and how to maximize your life with chronic illness. I designed this course as a companion to the podcast. The podcast gives specific real-world examples and the course helps you put them into action. If you want personalized one-on-one help from me, I got you. I also offer individual coaching programs where we can talk about the problems you are facing. I'll help you manage your brain and find solutions to nearly every problem that you have. We will walk hand in hand on this journey together. Check the show notes or the video description on YouTube for more information on getting extra help from me. Talk to you soon.